You know, one of the things about being in private practice is, is that as you grow, things can start to get complicated. And one of the things you'll probably figure out you need pretty quickly is a good electronic health record system. Therapy Notes is the number one provider of electronic health record systems uh, for mental health providers. It's what I use in my practice, and I can highly recommend them. So I invite you to go over and check them out. Go over to therapynotes.com, and then if you'll use the coupon code GORDON, G-O-R-D-O-N, you can get two months free. That's a great deal. So go check them out today. Therapynotes.com. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 69 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast. If this is the first time for you to listen to the podcast, welcome. And I'm so thrilled to have you join me in this journey. If you're a repeat listener, welcome back. And if you're if you haven't subscribed yet, I would invite you to go over and subscribe to the podcast. So here it is. Uh, we're almost done with February as I'm recording this, and um, I am sick of the rain. We have had so much rain and wet weather this year. I can't remember this much, but um, my heart goes out to those folks that are dealing with flooding and all that that entails for them. Um, I know here where I'm located, got heard on the news this morning of some mudslides. So um, weird weather stuff. Um, so yeah, like they say, global warning, warming isn't real, right? Oh boy. Well, I don't want to digress with that. Um, that's getting kind of negative and I don't want to be that way. So, but anyway, folks, I'm glad you're here with me for this podcast episode. I've got Dr. Joanne Royer with me today, and I'm so excited for you to get to know her and uh, find out about what she's doing. And we're talking, going to be talking today primarily about how she made the kind of the transition and um, which is uh, maybe a little unconventional, but not too much so, but moving from being a traditional type therapist to more uh, coaching and uh, life coaching and that sort of thing and how how she did that and why she did that. So we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, But a few things I want to make you aware of and uh, I really want to kind of um, uh, something that's coming up this year in October want to make you aware of is a big event that I'm involved with with my good friend Joe Sanok. And if you haven't heard about it yet, it's called Killing It Camp. And I was looking over, and if you'll just go to um, just simply killingitcamp.com, you can get the information on that and register for that. But what it is, is it's going to be uh, uh, a conference, uh, and it's going to be kind of an unconventional unconventional type of conference. Um meeting in Estes Park, Colorado, and be staying at the YMCA of the Rockies is the name of the place. But I am just so pumped and so excited about being able to be there. I'm going to be one of the one of the workshop speakers. And then a bunch of my friends are going to be there. A lot of the folks, I was just looking at the list and a lot, most of these folks have been on the podcast. So uh, we've got... Um, uh, We've got Cecilia Brasino that's going to be there, Amanda Patterson, um, also Katie Englert, uh, Allison Pigeon, uh, Dr. Megan Warner, who was here on on here recently, and um, Laura Long, who was in last week's podcast. They're all going to be at Killing It Camp, and so we're going to just be... um, having a lot of fun and it's really going to be a wonderful way to to ramp things up and really help your practice practice excel i'm i'm looking forward to it just kind of for selfish reasons because i know i'm going to learn so much from all the people that are going to be there so if you'll go over and check that out it's killingitcamp.com and uh 
better go ahead and get registered because the early bird um, discount is in effect now. It's uh, it's it's really a good bargain. It's six hundred and fifty dollars uh, for the early bird ticket, and that includes your lodging and all of that. So um, ch- go check it out today. The other thing, just want to put in just a quick uh, word again about the um, money matters in private practice course that I've got going. It's um, we're still in the pre-launch phase uh, as of the recording of this, and so you can get that for for half price for a, uh, and it's a pretty comprehensive course. I spent a lot of time working on the bookkeeping module yesterday, almost had that done and ready to go up there. Uh, it really does. Um, uh, one of the things about doing these online courses is that they, they do take a lot of time to put together. So I'm really trying to work hard to get a lot of quality material in there and really help you learn about how to handle the financial side of private practice. Because again, if you're like me, that wasn't something you learned. And I've learned a lot about that over the years, just about how to handle the money, how to, um, knowing how to allocate for different things and how to manage all the different things that go into running a private practice from a financial side. So that's what the course is about. So you can go check that out over at practiceoftherapy.com slash finance course and um, learn about that and get it at half price while we're in this uh, uh, pre-launch phase. So enough about that. Um, So Without further ado, here is my friend Joanne Royer, and we are going to be talking about um, making that transition from being a therapist to being a life coach, which is very interesting. And um, uh, uh, Joanne has a lot of good things to say about that. So here's Joanne Royer. folks and welcome again to the practice of therapy podcast and and i'm so happy to have with me today as my guest uh joanne joanne royer i'm saying your name correctly aren't i joy joanne yes, perfect, perfect. okay and uh joanne and i met again through uh, mutual friends um i think it was lisa wozniak that introduced us and and i really i have gotten um I've been thrilled to kind of find out about Joanne and the stuff that she's doing around uh, coaching and uh, just some neat stuff that she's doing with uh, kind of the, in this, this realm of private practice, but it's a little bit different spin on it. And I thought this would be, she would be a great person to talk to. So Joanne, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. It's it's a great honor to be be on your uh, podcast today. Yes, yes. So, Joanne, tell folks a little bit more about yourself and uh, kind of how you've landed where you've landed in your, I guess, maybe your, uh, in many ways, private practice is a little bit different um, spin on it, but also just entrepreneurially, uh, how you've landed where you've landed. Right, right. Well, I do, I do um, say that I do have a private practice, so, so that is correct. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think my uh, my journey started uh, in '91 when I was first licensed um, as a, a LMFT, um, and I got started working in residential treatment. Um, those were the pre-departmental health days, um, uh-huh. but uh, I was working in residential treatment for about 15 years and I tended to have more teenage girls. And what I found was that largely what they were coming to the table with was how they, some faulty thinking, some limiting thinking that they um, uh, were challenged with through the years. Not so much Um, You know, of course, uh, you know, they had some depression, they had some anxiety, but in those days, it really was, um, uh, you know, they they had these beliefs about themselves, and it was causing a lot of challenges in in their relationships, and, you know, they went through a few foster homes, group homes, and landed in residential treatment, but I very quickly, my style of working at that, well, still to this day, was one of 
partnership and collaboration and it was very strength based and I realized mm -hmm. quickly that working with teens these were uh, girls that were going to quickly age out and so the work really focused on helping them get to a place of um, doing okay but creating a plan uh, where they could actually thrive and start believing that they had the power to kind of to, to create or write what their future would hold for them uh -huh. versus being stuck um, in the stories of, of um, the past and um, probably in 2006 somebody had introduced me to executive coaching at that time um, yeah. You know, coaching wasn't really, wasn't as sexy as a word, you know, now everybody, you know, uh, calls himself coach. But in 2006, executive coaching um, was very um, much, um, was very popular uh, and widespread in the United States, uh, working with corporations, what have you. I went to a orientation that, that this particular program had, and immediately it just really resonated with me. So my coaching background, I went through a two-year program and got certified through them. And so my coaching background really started in 2006. Uh -huh. um, so I still worked in mental health agencies, uh, did a lot of program development. My main, uh, uh, I usually was the person hired in to um, basically fix broken systems and broken systems from the uh, from team from a team perspective. And so my coaching, the coaching fundamentals that I I learned came. Um, handy in really using a bit of a corporate executive coaching approach to building um, systems within the mental health teams that I was working with. Um, and, because we, yeah. and because we worked with within a multidisciplinary team approach, you know, you could see the reverberations of this coaching style. Um, I continue to do clinical supervision, but I always use my coaching in supervision. Once we were you know, we worked on the client related issues, if you will, it really came down to what was coming into the supervision room was the therapists um, doubt about their capabilities and their competence. Yes. Uh -huh. and um, you know, when you're working with human behavior, whether it's mental health or, or coaching, change is small. And um, unfortunately, we almost have to learn how to identify the small steps of successes that our clients are taking. Right. But, but at the same time, as a therapist, we also need to start identifying what are our wins of the day within ourselves, in the role of a therapist, within a role of, you know, a wife, a mother, a friend. Um, because basically, how we do us is how we do our business. So whether right. you're an entrepreneur or whether you're an employee, um, you're bringing into those environments how you're thinking about yourself. Um, mm -hmm. So I really was coaching um, for many years within my coaching uh, supervision. Um, and, you know, like many therapists, they've gotten to a point where agency work, you know, they hit the end of the road within their agency work. And mm -hmm. um, that's really the um, juncture where they decided to start, um, uh, you know, private practice. Right. And so that's the same situation for me is that I decided, you know, I really love, I mean, it's beautiful that I have the, the expertise uh, as a mental health therapist. Um, how can I, and the fact that I also have this coaching expertise, um, I just made the decision to step into creating a coaching practice. And because I'm on the, uh, the upper end of 50, um, for whatever <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, I started to, um, the, the women that I mainly work with and who I market to are women who are approaching 50 and older because I think, and I do have some 30-somethings, I do have some 20-somethings, I have a couple men, but I largely... Um, for myself, I realized, you know, I'm starting to create uh, a bit of a list of, gee, I wish I had done that, or I should have done this differently, or I could yeah. have, 
been this. And when I asked myself what's standing in the way, what stood in the way, if you will, it was really my thinking about myself, mm-hmm. my thought of, you know, gee, I, you know, I'm too old to start another career or, you know, I'm not really very good at X, Y, and Z, or um, I don't think I have the, um, the, 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 the competency to, to, to take on, you know, this new role or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. so, so, and I think once there's something about 50 where, you know, you have a lot, you have a few things in the rearview mirror. And so you do start to think, okay, look, these are things that didn't happen. I, I'm, I'm, I still, for a lot of years, keep getting the same results that I'm really not wanting. I want to make a shift. I want to make a change. Um, you know, I've got a good, you know, hopefully another 50 or so years mm-hmm. you know, down the road. How could I do things differently? And for me, it's similar to a cognitive behavioral approach but for me it all co- comes down to how we choose to think and so that's the coaching work that I do is that I work with um, with my clients teaching them the tools because really the only thing that we have power over <laughs> although mm-hmm. we would love to have power and control over the people in our lives uh, or and sometimes the situations uh, around that that are going on we only have power over our thoughts there how we are choosing to show up in our lives so that's fundamentally uh the approach that i take um Mm -hmm. coaching yeah um um, yeah so yeah so So, yeah it's uh yeah what's interesting is um uh, several things that you said there that just resonated for me um <clears throat> excuse me um you know what you were just talking about the supervision process and and uh i do i'm a in addition to my my consulting stuff i'm also uh an aamft approved supervisor and so one of the things that you were talking about was really kind of parallel process mm-hmm. in that um you know when we're when we're working with people um our, our own stuff comes into it Mm-hmm. And uh, I love what you said there about our thought processes because that's uh, that that's exactly the same message I not only do with supervision but really also um, with my clients as well. I know just uh, yesterday I had a session with a with a client and we were just talking about mindset and just being mm-hmm. you know getting uh, kind of getting right in your head about yourself is, is the first step to really kind of overcoming a lot of stuff. Right. Right. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, it's the old adage where, you know, you can only take your client as far as you've gone right in your own, in your own work. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, there's just so many stories that, that I, I use the term thought habits because, and I relate it to food so often. Uh huh. <laughs> really need to look at what what that's all about for me but i just think you know i i've i've i wrote a blog on this that that thoughts are almost you know similar to you know uh, how we make choices in our our eating is becomes habitual like if you you know you might go into that restaurant it's a new restaurant you're bound and determined to have something different than you than you you know you've ever ordered before but for some reason the 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 um a uh, waiter comes up and you end up leaning back towards the familiar grilled chicken right, or the grilled right. fish or the salad because mm-hmm. that's what you know. You know the result. It may not be what you ultimately want, mm-hmm. but it's familiar and it's not very risky. And I think with, with um, you know, if you've kept a food log, you know, for about a week, you know, for medication or weight management or, or, what, or whatever, you see that you tend to eat the same things. Like I have grilled chicken, I have a, you know, a marinated chicken, I have uh-huh. a what have you, rotisserie chicken, but it's the same thing, you know, throughout the course of the week. That's what happens with our thoughts is they just become habitual to the point where we're not even aware of what we're thinking. We just dive right into the action, right? Yes. uh 
the whole thought model that I work with about how, you know, thoughts that, that are connected to feeling and then the feeling is connected to the action and then the action reaps the result. And it usually all leads back to the original way that we chose to think. So it's, it's really, um, first you have to be aware of what you're mm -hmm. thinking in order to change, you know, as you know. Right. But, you know, clients come in or, or uh, because I do work with a, a lot of therapists, you know, they are so doubt is something that's so familiar for them um, that, uh, you know, they question, they're second guessing their approach, they're second guessing their competencies, they're second guessing if they're able to, if, if change, if they're able to even create or, or help to um, uh, uh, bring about change for their client. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking that about themselves. And when it's time for them to go into the therapy room in front of their client, how are they, how are they then showing up for their client? And then how are they helping their client to recognize, mm. you yeah. know, um, strengths? So um, that's why I, I really love working with the therapists, right. helping professions, because we're usually the last people to take care of ourselves and to take care of our mental wellness. Yes. Um, I truly believe that not everybody needs psychotherapy. I think that some of us are more prone to more depressive personalities. Some of us are more prone to an anxious um, personality. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that going to meet the DSM criteria. It's, it's learning to have, you know, a different relationship with those emotions and feelings. Right. And learning to have a different relationship with doubt. I, you never get rid of doubt. That's the mm -hmm. first thing people come to the table with, with me is, okay, I'm ready to get rid of, you know, kick doubt away and never, ever experience it again. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to happen. It's yeah. always going to rear its head. The yeah. Issue I'm more mindful of when that's creeping in, how that might be showing up for you, and then giving you the tools to create a different relationship with it. Because all feelings are a double-edged sword, right? Yes, yes. You know, you're, you're, uh, uh, Joanne, you're, you're speaking my language again. I just want <laughs> to hear, hear a lot of my way of thinking about this as well. You know, there's, uh, um, there's a researcher that I like, uh, yeah, and you might be familiar with him. Is a guy by the name of Michael Yapko. He's uh, he's done a lot of stuff on um, done a lot of st stuff with hypnosis and and that sort of thing. But I think one of the things that he said one time that just really resonated with me um, is really just paying attention to and. Uh, being aware of the what he refers to as the internal critic mm -hmm. of being um, being mindful of that and then learning how to not so much silence it but just to dismiss it uh, mm -hmm. because we I think we let that just kind of be the message that we becomes the predominant message of, yes. of second guessing ourselves and like you said doubt comes into it and and all of those things and so I think that's that's kind of the key with a lot of this this stuff. I think about the people, you know, people that are going into private practice or starting a private practice um, is learning how to dismiss the doubts that they might have right. about it. Yeah, right. you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to you're going to make mistakes, but not letting that petrify you along Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. I really believe in, you know, deliberately thinking ahead because mm -hmm. it's like you were saying you know the critic the inner critic that that you know that's going to rear its head so if you can anticipate ahead of time you know you already know most of us already know the situations where we're going to be a little more anxious and you know anxieties can be can really be a great yeah. um, server for for us but if you can anticipate ahead of time and deliberately start thinking and rehearsing how you're going to show up right mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know that you can you know um can change the story right if you learn that the story that you're telling yourself is not fact-based right i right. mean 
just to make a decision or make a decision that, you know what, I've been telling myself this for years and there's no basis for it. That is yeah. so freeing once you can get the, the, the you know, be, be clear on that. But a lot of times I, I do a lot of work of trying to help connect what the mind is saying. Like we don't talk enough about the mind. Like the mind is just an organ as the heart is. It serves mm -hmm. a purpose, right? Right. Um, but if we can help to connect the mind with our heart, like our heart is always talking to us, you know, that intuition, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, the, the mind doesn't really give us answers. It gives us a lot of obstacle, obstacles in, in the way it chooses to think because it really wants to keep us safe. It wants us to stay in the familiar and the predictable. So anytime we make a change, right, anytime we decide mm -hmm. to change, think differently about ourselves the mind's just like what's going on i'm not used to this right so it's uh -huh. going to pull you back into um you know a familiar way of thinking and so you just need to be three steps ahead of it and um i call anchor thoughts right writing mm -hmm. down the thoughts that you um want to think instead of what the mind is trying to throw at you, um, mm -hmm. because that's the only way that you're going to combat that critical voice and change the thought habit. Right, right. You know? Um, yeah. yeah, so if we can connect the heart with the mind, I think that, you know, that's, that's really the relationship ultimately yeah. to help yeah. people um, um, have. Right. It's the heart that gives you the answers, right? Like, right. if we say, what does your heart say? Mm -hmm. well, what would your heart, you know, if your heart could speak to you, what would it say about yourself? That's where the clarity is. That's really yes. not necessarily the mind. But. Right. The, the more I do this, the more I realize that the, all of these ideas are so interconnected. I'm mm -hmm. reminded of Joseph Campbell. Um, yes, yes. Yes. And his mm -hmm. whole follow your bliss. And I think mm -hmm. that that's uh, in, in line with that, just being mm -hmm. able to, to find that thing that just really brings you joy and purpose yes. in life and yes. just being able to, to follow that. And, right. um, you know, I think that's within us all and we, um, we just need to pay attention more to that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I was listening, uh, I listen every now and then to Joel Olstein and he talks about, uh, um, you know, not allowing others to steal your joy. Right. Yes, uh -huh. but, but I think really, you know, what that's all about is no one has the power to have you feel anything. Mm hmm. Right. You have the power to create how you want to. I mean, things happen in life. And of course, you're going to have an emotional response to it. But those are the not non-controllable. But 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 when you can make a decision that, you know, this person, I'm not feeling very joyful. Um, uh, that's something that you have the ability to change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you think differently about yourself and then and then cr start to create some boundaries for yourself right. to get that back into joy yeah that nobody yeah. can take that away from you the, any yeah. any feeling you know if they people don't have the power to make us feel anything we think that but it's not yes. true yes and yeah. vice versa right uh -huh. like I, you know, we're working with, with, with client, with women who, you know, I want my daughter, I want my child to, you know, uh, feel this way, right? I want my husband to think this way. Well, we don't have that power. We can respect that they have their own feelings and thoughts. Right. So how, how do you want to think differently so that you can show up differently? Right. You have right. that loving conversation with your daughter or your husband yeah. or what have you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Joanne, in, in your work with people and your coaching that you do with, I guess, what are you, what do you notice about, and we've kind of been talking about this anyway, but yeah. what do you notice are some of the, the thought habits that people have that tend to keep them stuck the most? Yeah, uh, yeah. definitely doubt. I mean, that has to be the number one, mm -hmm. uh, that they're doubting their capabilities they're doubting their um some of them doubt some women are doubting their lovability 
Mm. Um, yeah. Or the, I think again, because I largely work with women who are approaching 50 or older, some ageism issues come in. I'm too old to go for that promotion. I'm too old uh, because I work largely with career women um, as well. Um, sometimes I'll have a client that comes in who has, for example, jewelry as a hobby. They Ha they really their passion is to create a business out of it mm -hmm. so but they are saying coming to the table that it's a hobby what keeps them out of stepping into a business is they're thinking for example i'm too old to create a business you know, I've been a wife, a mother, my kids are, you know, uh, are transitioning, you know, into college, what have you. Um, I'm too old to, to, to take on something new. Yeah. Um, what if I don't have the skills? What if I fail? Lar Here's one. What will my friends think? Yes. <laughs> right? If, I, if yeah. I, I make this change. How about what if I fail? What if I'm yeah. not successful? Yes. You know, so, uh, you know, there isn't an age, uh, you know, uh, placed on any of these thoughts because I can see it in a 30 year old, I can see it in a 20 year old, or I could see it in a, you know, 55 and older. Right. Um, and that's the point is if you've got this 20 year old who doesn't learn how that they can learn to think differently, that they can actually learn to challenge some of their thought assumptions. Mm -hmm. Um, Sooner or later, they will be that 58-year-old or that 60-year-old, or they will be that 88-year-old that's looking back and saying, oh, my God, what a shoulda, coulda. Yep, yep. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, if you, and if you listen to many of those shoulds and ought tos, yes. you just get should on is what I say. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I like that. But uh -huh. the other thing about shoulds, you know, that comes to the table a lot on coaching calls. Um, yeah. I always talk about a should is really an expectation, right? You're, you're uh -huh. it, whether it's whether it's my daughter should or my partner should or I should. You're placing expectations. Mm -hmm. So I try again this is why th doing some thought work is so important and powerful because if you can make a decision step into a decision without expectation wow mm -hmm. how would you show up then right you know right. so um you know the shoulds yeah uh second guessing is huge mm -hmm. oh, how about mm -hmm. this perfectionism oh yes uh -huh. i had a Absolutely. dollar for every time i i i heard you know but i want to be perfect i want to get it right and if we just realize that it's through our it's through our misses it's through identifying what's not working that's how we just get better right, right? Like right. you, you know yes. what I mean? Like yeah. if, if you've made a recipe the first time, oh, it's a little too salty, or I didn't add enough salt, or whatever it is, you know, you, you've you got to start somewhere so uh, that you, you can then do, make a tweak where so that it's better the next time. Yeah. You have a choice to, you know, because we're always going to have a do over. Right, right. right? Well, it's, a, you know, it's the only way that we grow. We have to get outside yeah. our, our comfort zone and, mm -hmm. and be able to kind of push those limits. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I always think about the uh, metaphor of learning to ride a bicycle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only way anyone learns to ride a bicycle is because it's they let themselves get uncomfortable. And, and sometimes you just have to fall off the bike to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. You know, I think about fear, right? Because who mm -hmm. likes to feel, uh, feel fear? But if you've ever come, if you've ever moved on the other side of fear <laughs> and you've mm -hmm. had that experience, wow, that wasn't so bad. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can think of the bicycle. You could be afraid of like, you know, going from the, to the what is it? The, to, the um, training wheels, right? Yes. Yes. Now you're looking for that big bike, right? We can all remember that. Uh -huh. um, it was scary, but it was the freedom of having your parent or whoever it was let go of that bike. That's truly how you, that you you pedaled through to use that metaphor. Right, right. Pedaled through the fear, and you came to the other side. Yes. 
You know, if yeah. you see if, if you've seen a kid who's riding, you know, who's who's on the bike and the, their parents let go for the first time, they've got this joy, this grin because they made it through the other side. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. This is great stuff, Joanne. And um, wow. Uh, I want to be respectful of your time. And um, well, are any parting thoughts that you've got just about the, you know, mindset and, you know, just being able to overcome kind of these mind, mindset habits that we get into? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I talk a little bit about the, the thought, the, the steps, the thought model that I use, but mm -hmm. I guess anything, I would really want to share a tip that I have found very helpful. I talk a lot of, <laughs> like my uh -huh. clients definitely know the vocabulary that I use because I use uh -huh. to a lot. So I think a great tip to share with your audience is at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of talk about morning rituals, right? But mm -hmm. there's an evening ritual that I, I like to teach you know my clients to do is if they can look um, at something that took place during the day that they feel you know what I, I really um, would have liked to have handled that better mm -hmm. um, you the situation right review the situation um how would you like to come at it differently how would you like to think about it differently how would you like to feel differently because you will get a do-over and so basically you're just rehearsing right mm -hmm. you're just rehearsing for the next time and so it's a great evening ritual that and identifying one win anything it's mm -hmm. not a billboard sign. It, it could be anything. And maybe you had that extra glass of water. You know, maybe you, um, you know, didn't hit the snooze uh, uh, bar, you know, uh, in the morning when your alarm went off. But any kind of win, those are all things that you're responsible for. Yes. And so I think we, sh we shortchange ourselves. We're so able to be critical and come up with a list of things we haven't done. Mm -hmm. But I think time that we start looking at what are the things that are, are working in our lives and going well. Yes, yes. I, again, it just reminds me of some things that I uh, have talked with clients about. I think we're really, we're really quick, quick to point out what's wrong and lose sight of what is right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, somebody said, uh, I was just thinking about some couples I've worked with in the past and one of um one of them, you know, was giving a laundry list of what their what their husband does wrong, and I said, "Well, if he were to get it right, what would he do differently?" Uh huh. Uh, yeah, and so and that really kind of makes them pause to think. Okay, I'm just focusing on the on the on the negative, and I think uh, we we need to do the same in our own lives. You know, if you, if you were to get it right, if you were to do it brilliantly, mm -hmm. what would that look like? So, mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. So great. Well, Joanne, I'm so glad we got to have this conversation today. I just, uh, I think this is just so refreshing and so, uh, so uplifting to kind of hear and, and think about these things in this way. If folks would like to get in touch with you and learn more about you, how can they do that? Uh, well, my website is uh, Joanne Royer, PhD.com. Uh -huh. um, and uh, my, they can also, they can, I have a 30 minute call that I, that I give as a gift. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so people can certainly, if they've uh, have some thoughts that are keeping them up at night and, and keeping them stuck, uh, bring it to a call. Let's just mm -hmm. let's power through it in 30 minutes. I'll kind of give you a little bit of, of how I work with this thought model that I talk about. So you have uh -huh. some tools and I also have um, a group um, starting in March I should say that all of my work is online okay so, uh, I probably should have started that uh, earlier that so you can live anywhere uh, in the US um, I have some international clients so it's all online but I am starting a group in March for helping professionals for <laughs> women in particular who are um, solopreneurs, maybe in private practice, because I'm finding that loneliness is really becoming a huge epidemic. Yes. Work. So I work from home. I'm sure, you know, there's a number of people, you know, in your audience, but even in a private practice, um, you go into your office, it's largely just you. So it can yes. be 
you know, isolating and lonely. And, um, you know, I don't know about you, but that's when the thought thoughts start to yes. attack yep. and, the doubt and the competencies. And so it's really creating a virtual community of other career women who are in the helping profession, um, learn to really take care of themselves, see the value that they bring to the work, um, get some coaching from me, uh, get some accountability. We talk a little bit about thoughts that are keeping them stuck even in their business building. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that starts in March. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, my, my phone number real quick is 978-308. Nine three three zero and Gord, I'm sure you'll have this up. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll, I'll we'll put all of this in the in the show notes and have all that pip, uh, so that people can access it. Yes. yes. So this is um, great. I could yeah. talk for an hour. Yes. Well, Joanne, again, thank you for joining me today, and so glad to have you on the Practice of Therapy podcast. And and I'm sure we'll probably maybe try to uh, get together again. folks, I hope you really enjoyed getting to know Joanne as well as I did. I just, uh, as I think I mentioned in there is that, uh, you know, we, we're, we think alike and, um, at least her mindset and my mindset are very much the same when it comes to our approach with, with life and just dealing with the ups and downs of life. You know, um, mindset is, and this is really what Joanne was alluding to was mindset is so important when it comes to accomplishing things in life and, and getting, you know, getting to where we want to be in our, not only in our practices, but just in our personal life. So go over and check out Joanne's stuff. Uh, believe again, her pot, her, um, not podcast, her website, uh, address was Joanne Royer, PhD.com. And all of this will be in the show notes as well. So you can check those out and her information and take advantage of the things that she's offering. She's, uh, she knows her stuff. She's been doing it a while. And, uh, I'm just glad that you got to hear Joanne and I hope that uh, be able to maybe have do some more stuff with Joanne here and here in the future. Um, also, be sure and check out our today's sponsor, Therapy Notes. Just go over to therapynotes.com and uh, check them out. And if you'll use uh, when you do their free trial, if you'll also use the uh, coupon code Gordon, you can get two months free and that's a great deal. And Therapy Notes is, uh, I switched to them this year just for a lot of reasons, but I'm just thrilled to death with their service and what they what they provide. And um, they have really been a game changer for me in my own practice and just helping with productivity and just being able to track all the things we need to track with our practices. So check them out today. And also don't forget about the Killing It Camp and you can check that out at Killing It Camp dot com and that's an event that joe sanok over at practice of the practice is sponsoring and i'm going to be there so i hope that you will sign up for that and join us in colorado in october and i, I know it's going to be a, a just a huge huge fun and we're going to be with just lots of great people um it's just going to be a fun thing. And then finally, the Money Matters course. Take advantage of this pre-launch and get it at half price. And I don't think I mentioned at the beginning, but when you go to sign up for that, um, if you'll use the coupon code TAKE50, if it doesn't prompt you for getting it at half price, you can use that co coupon code and get it at half price. So take care, folks. I look forward to talking with you next week. I've got some more uh, great guests coming up. I've got Lisa Wozniak. I've also got Laura Painter coming up. And I've got a few other folks that are lined up for the podcast here, here in the near future. And it's going to be some fun episodes. So take care, folks. Have a great rest of your week or weekend whenever you're listening to this podcast. And thanks for subscribing. Uh, I really do appreciate the fact that you're following me. And so be, so be sure and subscribe wherever you might be listening to the podcast. Take care.
been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer. Please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information, resources, and tools to help you in starting, building, and growing your private practice. And if you haven't done so already, please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com. The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.